So in this question, we're trying to determine the number of grams of cisplatin, which is the product in this reaction right here, that are formed by a given number of grams of each of the two reactants. We're also told that the yield is only 95%. So what we've done first is we've found the molar masses of both reactants as well as the product that the question is asking about, and we've written those molar masses beneath the compounds. Remember that the units of each of these molar masses will be in grams per mole. If you have questions about where those come from, let me know in the comments. Basically, we just looked up the masses of each element of the formula in the periodic table. So next, we want to determine how many grams of cisplatin we can form based on both this amount of the reactant as well as on the other amount of a reactant. So we're going to make two calculation strings here and we're going to follow the roadmap listed below. What we're going to do is convert the grams of the first reactant into the moles and then from there we're going to convert the moles into the moles of product and then into the grams of product. So it will become clear as we proceed. Why don't we start with the 55.4 grams of the K2PTCl4 and if you study the roadmap, you can see that we're going to be able to convert that into the moles of that same substance. And we do that using the molar mass. Now again, we've listed the molar mass of the K2PTCl4 above. We can see that one mole of that substance amounts to 415.0866 grams of that substance. Setting it up in this manner allows us to cancel out the grams and that leaves us with moles of that reactant but now we're going to convert the moles of that reactant into the moles of product and we do that by using the balanced reaction. We can see that one mole of the reactant yields one mole of the product so they are in the classic one to one ratio. So we're going to write one mole of the reactant on the bottom will form one mole of the product above. And this is a rather long formula to write. Setting up in that manner allows the moles to cancel out. And then we have one more step where we go from moles of the product to the grams of the product. And we will do that using the molar mass. Just make sure we have enough room here. The molar mass of the product is listed right here. So we can see from that that one mole of the product will amount to 300 0.04504 grams of the product. So the moles would cancel and this would leave us with grams. We would want to pick up our calculators and punch this in and when we do so we get about 40.05 grams of the product PT NH32Cl2. Now that was based on the grams of the K2PTCl4. We also have to do this with the grams of the other reactant, the 35.2 grams of NH3. Following the roadmap, we'll go from grams to moles and we will use the molar mass to do so. That was the value given right here. So we can see that one mole of NH3 will amount to a mass of 17.03052 grams of NH3. Next, we will go from moles of NH3 to moles of the product, and we do that by using the balanced coefficients. We can see here that in fact two moles of NH3 will react to form one mole of the product. So we have to be a little bit more careful here and write that two moles of NH3 will form one mole of the product. I'm just going to write product here for now because the formula is so long. The moles of NH3 cancel as did the grams and now we go from moles of the product to grams by using once again the molar mass. So one mole of product on the bottom here is 300.04504 grams. Let's pick up our cal calculators and punch this in as well. And when we do so, we get about 310.08 grams of the product. Now, of course, we have to decide which number of grams of product is the correct one. It's a relatively easy choice to make because you're always going to select the smaller number of grams of product. You are essentially limited in how much of the product you can form 
based on the smallest possible amount calculated. So this is so far the amount we're focusing on, but let's not forget that we only have a 95% yield. So we're not yet done. We have to take this number of grams and then simply multiply it by 95%. So you're basically just doing 0.95 times that number of grams of product. And when you complete that calculation, you should get approximately 38 grams. So this would be the correct number of grams of product formed in this reaction based on the 95% yield.